their heart to go to a people who are not their people. They see a people who are hurting and they're willing to get out of their comfort zone. And they say, we're going to go there and we're going to hang out with them, even at the threat of getting arrested at times. You see, this past week, when they were down there, they told them, you cannot feed anybody because you don't have a permit to feed people downtown. So since you don't have a permit, you can't feed people food and you can't feed them water because you don't have a permit to do it, right? So they're willing to go and get arrested if they need to so that they can feed people physical food, but also feed them spiritual food. They're willing to go to any length that people might come to know Jesus, and God's put some heart, some dreams, some abilities in your mind and your heart. There's people who go out and reach out to the biker community here at Journey Church. What community has God called you to reach out to? What hobby do you have? What gets you excited and what stirs you up that you haven't really thought of in an intentional way of how can I use this thing to go out there and touch that people group with the love of Christ? May this story inspire you to step out and continue to dream. For some of you, God's wanting to take you to other countries. He's wanting to take you outside of this context to a different place. You see, I know the Santiago's are sitting over in the corner over there, and they've shared with me their dream of going to Spain. They went there a few weeks ago on a reconnaissance mission. They went around there, and they checked out all kinds of places, and they prayed over different places, and they said, Lord, where do you want us to be? Where do you want us to plant? Where do you want us to be so that we could be a maximum impact and of service to you, Lord? How would you use us in that context? So they're stepping out in faith. And some of you are scared. You say, I've done too much bad things. This has happened in my life. God would never use me anymore. He'll use you. Let me tell you, he will use you. He'll use the things that you love to be an opportunity to minister the gospel. See, Smiley's back there, man. You Use that gym. I know you do as an opportunity to reach people with the love of Christ while you're there. We had a kickboxer who was here earlier. He kickboxes, but while he's out there doing kickboxing, he's ministering the love of Jesus Christ while he's hanging out with those people in that context. Some of you are boaters, some of you are golfers. You know, you have all different heart skills and abilities and things that you like to do. God wants you to use those as mission. Make it your mission to go out and touch people with the love of God in whatever context you find yourself in. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? There's two groups of people that I'd like to pray for before we close. Some of you who are here, you might not be part of the family of God. You came here. Somebody invited you here. Or maybe you've been in church for an awful long time, but you've never fully surrendered your heart to God. And today you just sense a beating in your heart that says, man, I want to surrender my life to God. Some of you have been Christians for some time, but you've drifted from God. And today you're home. You've been hurt by church, but today you're home. And you just sense a need in your heart to maybe rededicate your life to him today. To just say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I come home to you. I want to live a life on mission. For others of you, you are believers in Jesus Christ, but you're sitting on the sidelines. I don't know why you're sitting on the sidelines. Maybe you'd never heard a teaching like this, and today God's stirring your heart, and you're saying, man, I I need to step up and serve. Mission can't just be a part of my life. It has to be my life. If that's you, it's an opportunity to step up. For some of you, like some ladies that walked up to me earlier in the first service, they said, man, we've been hurt by church. The people that we were in in the last church, they hurt us, and We don't want to step up again. We're nervous about it. Are you real? Are you genuine with the things that you're sharing? Are you you going to hurt us again? And I said, you know, there's going to be times in reality that we're going to disappoint you because we're human beings, but we try to be real. We try to live this out with everything that's within us. We want to love you and care for you and be there for you. So if you've been hurt, man, just surrender that to God and step up again and don't let that hurt hold you back from using your gifts. Some of you, it's sin that's held you back, but it's in the past, and God's healing you from that. Man, would you put that in its past and step up and serve, and you don't know that God might not ignite your heart and set you on fire, or that sin in your life no longer becomes desirable because you've stepped out in faith and obedience, and you began to serve, and that sin is the last thing that's on your mind because now you're fired up to live for God. Others, you're here, and you've just been apathetic. Like, man, I'm not going to serve. They've got enough people to serve. They don't need anybody else to serve. You've just been sitting on the sidelines and God's speaking to your heart today and he's telling you to repent. They just say, man, they, they need my heart skills and abilities. The body is incomplete without me serving and stepping up and being a part of it. Some of you, you've stopped dreaming. Life's beat you down and you've got some dreams that go beyond 
this place. You've got a dream to plant a church. You've got a dream to minister to a group of people, but you put it on the sidelines. God's speaking to you today, and he's saying, rekindle that dream. We at Journey want to help facilitate that dream in your life. Man, is God speaking to you today? If God's speaking to you over any of the things that I've shared, would you do me a favor? Would you raise your hand up real high? I'm not going to call you out or make you feel weird. I'd like to pray for you right where you're at. Is God speaking to you today? See your hand and yours and yours and yours and yours and yours. Lord, thank you for all the hands that have been raised throughout this room. Father, we just come before you in a heart of repentance. Father, we just say thank you for this great gift of salvation. We thank you for grafting us into the family of God. We thank you for patriarchs of the faith like Peter who stepped out of their comfort zone and came out to reach out to the non-Jewish people that we might have life and salvation. And Father, in turn, would we yield that responsibility well? Like Peter, would we go out to the nations? Would we go out to the people of Israel, the people of Spain, the people of Jacksonville, the people of Orange Park, the people of Clay County, the people of North Jacksonville, the people of St. Augustine? Father, would we go out beyond the walls of this church and within the walls of this church, living our lives to make a difference for you? Father, we come before you with hearts that just say, Lord, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our apathy. Forgive us for not trusting in you. Forgive us for so much, Lord God. We thank you that we are forgiven. We thank you that we can freely receive salvation by the blood of Jesus that was shed on a cross that day in Calvary. A drop for you, a drop for me. We are forgiven, we are set free. And then Jesus gives us a new name and a new mission in life. He calls us priests and prophets, ambassadors. Lord, would you put mission as a central focus in our life that we would never again see it as a peripheral thing, but we would live lives intentionally looking for those divine doors of opportunity that you've opened where we can share the gospel be it with a card, be it with our lives, be it over dinner, be it in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our hobbies. Father, enlighten us to those areas that you would send us. Father, as you sent Peter, we say to you, send us, oh God, that we would be difference makers in our generation. Father, I thank you for this wonderful group of people called Journey Church. And I'm grateful to be a part of this family. I am grateful to be home amongst this group of believers who lives their lives on mission. Father, I thank you for this church that gets outside of these walls and goes and attempts to make a difference. Father, I ask you to bring us more people who are like-minded, who would live their lives on mission, that we could set this city on fire. We want to see this city one for you, Jesus. Father, remove ourselves, Lord God, that you might get all the glory. Father, we praise you and give you all the glory this morning. We thank you for those who have surrendered their life to you today. Might we all live on mission in Jesus' name. And everybody says, would you put your hands together for our God and King? <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, thank you for worshiping with us today. If you're a guest and we haven't had a chance to meet, I'd love for you to stop up. I'd love to shake your hand after the service. Man, if you want to grab some of those cards, we've got a number of them out there by the Welcome Center on your way out. Grab some and give them out to some people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he give you peace in Jesus' name. Live your lives to make a difference in the lives of others. God bless you all. Have a great day, everybody. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us here for one of our inspiring messages at Journey Church. If you live in the greater Jacksonville area, we want to invite you to come out to one of our weekend experiences. Our service times are Saturday night at 6 p.m., Sunday at 9.30 a.m., or 11.15 a.m. Or, if you would like to, you can join us online at any time watching any of our services live at journeychurch.org. We look forward to seeing you next time.